Hello all, welcome back. In this video, we are going to cover VPC endpoints, followed by a quick demo. A VPC endpoint enables you to privately connect your VPC to supported AWS services and VPC endpoint services powered by private link without requiring an internet gateway, NAT, VPN connection, or an AWS Direct Connect connection. Instances in your VPC do not require public IP addresses to communicate with resources in the service. Traffic between your VPC and the other service does not leave the Amazon network. Endpoints are actually virtual devices that are horizontally scaled, redundant, and highly available VPC components that allow communication between instances in the VPC and AWS services without imposing availability risks or bandwidth constraints. AWS currently supports two types of endpoints, a VPC gateway endpoint that enables connectivity to S3 and DynamoDB, and VPC interface endpoints that enables connectivity to services powered by AWS private link. Services include AWS managed services, services hosted by other AWS customers and partners in their own Amazon VPCs, and supported AWS Marketplace Partner Services. In this demo, we are going to set up a VPC Gateway Endpoint to enable connectivity to S3 and a VPC Interface Endpoint to enable connectivity to SQS. Let's navigate to our VPC Dashboard. We already have a VPC created, a VPC A, Let's navigate to the resource map. We have two subnets in the US East 1 AAZ. The public subnet is connected to the custom route table with a network connection to Internet Gateway and the private subnet connected to the main route table without any network connection. Let's go to the EC2 management console. We are now going to create two EC2 instances an EC2 instance in the private subnet with no internet access and a bastion host for testing. Let's go ahead and launch our instances. I'm going to create a bastion host with the name VPC A bastion host with the Amazon Linux AMI 64-bit architecture T2 micro. I'm going to select a key pair which was already created in the previous demos. Let's edit the network settings. We're going to associate the instance with VPC A. We're going to launch the Bastion host in public subnet and assign a public IP. Let's select an existing security group, the web server security group, which has SSH enabled. Let's go into the advanced details. We need to attach an IAM role with the instance. We're going to attach an existing IAM role, which has access to S3 and SQS. Let's go ahead and launch our instance. While the Bastion host is launching, let's go ahead and launch our private server. I'm going to name the server VPC A private server. Let's use Amazon Linux 64-bit architecture T2 micro instance type. Let's use the same demo key pair. Let's edit the network settings associated with VPC A. We are going to launch it in the private subnet with no public IPs. Let's associate the same security group, the web server security group. And let's edit the advanced details to associate the EC2 demo role with the EC2 instance to have access to S3 and SQS. Let's go ahead and launch our instance. Now that the instances are being created, Let's wait for them to be in the running state and the status check passed. Let's navigate to the simple queue service. I have a demo queue already created. Let's send and receive messages. Let's poll for messages to check back for any messages in the queue. Currently there are none, so we are good for now. Let's go back to the instances.
The bash and host status check has now passed. Let's copy the public IP address for the bash and host and we can now SSH into the bash and host. Let's try to connect to S3 and list the buckets. We are able to list back the buckets now. Let's try to list the content of the Elastic Beanstalk bucket. And it works. I have a sample command to push a message to the SQSQ as well. Let's try to run the command with the message body message from Bash and Host. And yes, it's successful. Let's poll for the messages in SQS. And we see a new message. Let's check for the message body. And yeah, it's from the Bash and Host. Let's delete the message. Let's go back to the EC2 console. Let's copy the private IP address of the EC2 instance and we can SSH into the private instance from our bash and host. Let's try to run the same S3 LS command and the private host is not able to connect to S3. I have a sample command to push a message to the demo queue with a message body saying message from private instance. and it's not able to connect as well. As the private instance does not have access to the internet, it's not able to reach the S3 and SQS public endpoints. Let's go back to our VPC console and let's create endpoints. Let's create a VPC gateway endpoint first to enable connectivity from the private instance to S3. Let's click on create endpoint. I'm going to name VPC A gateway endpoint with the service category being AWS services. Let's search for S3. And for S3, we have both interface and gateway endpoints. However, we're going to create a gateway endpoint for S3. So let's select the gateway option. Let's select our VPC A. Let's select the main route table as it does not have any network connections and is associated with the private subnets. You can use the VPC endpoint resource policy to provide fine-grained access control to define which AWS principles can use the VPC endpoint to access the endpoint service. Let's create our first endpoint and the endpoint status is available. Let's check back on the route table Let's navigate to the main route table and check the routes and it has an entry to the VPC endpoint which is in the status active. Let's navigate back to the terminal and check the S3 connectivity from our private instance. And yes, now we are able to reach S3 from our private instance via the VPC endpoint. We are able to list the contents for the Elastic Beanstalk bucket as well. Now let's go back to our endpoints and create the SQS interface endpoint. I am going to name it as VPCA SQS interface endpoint. The service category is still AWS services. Let's search for SQS. For SQS there is only one type available that is interface. Let's select it. Let's navigate to the VPC settings. Let's select our VPC A. For subnets, we have to select an AZ and a subnet. For interface endpoints, you do not need to make any route table changes. For each subnet that you specify from your VPC, AWS creates a ENI in the subnet and assigns a private IP address from the subnet address range. The IP address type, let's keep it to IPv4. The VPC endpoint needs of security group to be associated with. Let's select an existing security group that we have. 
However, remember, the security group does not have an inbound rule for HTTPS. We will update it later. The rest of the settings looks good with the VPC endpoint policy. Let's go ahead and create our interface endpoint. The interface endpoint is still in the pending state. Let's wait for it to be available. Let's check the status. It's still pending. Let's refresh. And the status is now available. Let's now try to run the same command again. Trying to push the message to the sample SQSQ. It still fails. The reason being the security group has still not been modified to allow the inbound HTTPS rule. Let's go back to the VPC console, security groups. Let's modify the VPC web server security group to add an inbound rule. Let's edit the inbound rules. Let's add a rule for HTTPS. Let's just add the source anywhere from now. Save the rules. Now that the security group has been updated, let's go back again to the terminal and check back the SQS connectivity. And yes, now we are able to successfully push the message to the SQS demo queue from the private instance via the VPC interface endpoint. Let's go back to the SQS console, poll for messages. We have a new message and the message body contains the message from private instance tag. Let's delete the message. So we have successfully created a VPC gateway endpoint to route traffic to S3 and a VPC interface endpoint to route traffic to SQS. Interface endpoints supports a lot of other AWS services. The process remains the same. I hope you enjoyed the demo and thank you. All right, that was it. Thank you for watching. You can check out my website and connect me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. For any feedback, please leave a comment down below. To see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. Thank you.